All right, guys. Rooftop Koreans. It, it, it's such a staple. It, it really is, guys. It, the, the story is very famous. However, I just don't know much about it. I, I literally don't. <laughs> so we're gonna um do our little research and see what the what the whole deal is about, guys. So let's check it out. How Rooftop Koreans took back Los Angeles. Let's go. Three, two, one. Wednesday, April 29th, 1992. Way back. This was a year before I was born, so, you know. Uh, I didn't get to watch, like, any of the news reports or anything, guys. Legit. <clears throat> I don't know anything about the situation. Chaos erupts. Except, uh, it's just, like, some minor, you know, the minor gist of it, I guess you could say. In the streets of Los Angeles, as tens of thousands of looters pillage the city. Nah, bro. Still haven't seen something like this happen yet uh, again, and that's good because look at it, like, everything's on fire, bro. And with emergency services unavailable, business owners were left to fend for themselves. Now, out of all the st Oh, man, that's scary, bro. M imagine, like, being a small business owner and, you know, everybody's trying to loot. <laughs> loot, like, everything you, 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 you have, bro, like, your whole store, man, the whole inventory, bro. Hopefully insurance, like, covers for this. Stories told of the infamous 1992 L.A. riots. None have scratched the surface between myth and legend, like the story of a group of Korean immigrants taking arms on rooftops. This is that story. Snap, bro. That's a definition of taking matters into your own hands, right, guys? They're about it. They're about it. And this almost looks like uh, New York, but nah. Not not big enough buildings, right, guys? I think New York still has a bunch of ton, a ton of like uh, more taller buildings and stuff. And you could tell because it's just so, so much more sunny right here. You know what I mean? New York doesn't have those vibes. Got some like creepy music going on. I like it. I like it. So, yeah, definitely the dramatic intro, man. These dudes are not playing around. They're not playing around, guys. No, I'm not sure if they actually, like, hurt anyone or anything, guys. In my opinion, this intro is drawing in a little bit too long. This this dude's a dude with nearly 5 million views, not me, right, guys? Oh, he's got it in pink font. I like it, I like it. Hi, everyone. Donut here. The wait is over. I finally got around to making the roof cream video after years Years of anticipation. Just kidding. Here's Popo Medic. <laughs> Guys, is that the only appearance we're going to see from the dude? In April of 1992, four LAPD officers were tried following one of the most controversial excessive force incidents in American history. And after the Rodney King verdict was read, all four officers were acquitted, resulting in immediate protest. Earlier, we had uh, quite a scene where... Damn, bro, why is it always something like this? <clears throat> <laughs> that sparks up or guys usually is right protesters did even to this day guys i think there's something like a you know just a bunch of incidents from like the past 10 years where riots break out because the officer officers kill somebody <clears throat> storm the doors of parker center the protest started out peaceful but at approximately 4.15 p.m., a group of men approached the Pay Less Liquor in Delhi on Florence Avenue. The men walked into the liquor store, grabbed whatever the fuck they wanted, and walked out with no intention of paying. Two of the men smashed the liquor store's front door, and another man struck the store owner's son with a beer bottle. Dang, bro. Rendering him unconscious. That's too much, man. 
they're hurting it as well, bro. <clears throat> it's too much to even uh, rob, dude. Like, <sighs> straight up, just straight up hurting now. That, that's all bad, cause you know. Come on now, You're, they're attacking small businesses. Nine one one was dialed, and two officers from the seventy seventh Street Division. It's already rough enough to have a job as, as, as in a small business, you know what I mean? <clears throat> Vision of the LAPD responded, finding that the offenders had left upon arrival. And while making checks in the area for the offenders, a young man threw an object at their car. Approximately two dozen officers, commanded by LAPD Lieutenant Michael Mullen, arrived and- Snap, now they're ready to, with their riot gear, guys. So they usually do when something like this happens. Arrested the teenager, but the teenager put up a fight and resisted arrest. The teenager was a well-known minor in the community, further agitating a mass crowd of people who witnessed the arrest. The police formed a perimeter around the arresting officers as the crowd grew more hostile, leading to further altercations and arrests. And fearing the situation could potentially escalate to a life-threatening situation or the use of deadly force. Damn, bro, that's wild. Lieutenant Mullen ordered officers out of the area altogether. I know, right? They, 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 they got the whole squad over there, bro. It's too many, it's too many. 12 officers ain't enough, guys. I already see 12 already. And by six Look at those old style cars, man. Oh, how cars have changed in the past 31 years. 6 p.m., the looting began on mass scale. Dang, bro, now, now everybody's looting, guys? What the heck? You gotta stop playing with this, like, Ethernet dongle. Rampaging protesters <laughs> looted businesses in South Central Los Angeles, setting dozens of fires. One fireman has been a shot. The crowd began. What? No, man. Don't do this, bro. I know you guys are upset with it, but. Oh, God. And to turn physically violent. Seriously injuring bystanders and other members within the crowd. Absolutely polarizing the community and devastating business. I know, right? Come on, but... I know it's a sad story, but... Raising heck for no reason, bro. Thankfully, something like this wasn't that bad when Kai Sinet did his, uh... Meet me and greet, right, guys? That's not right! That's not right! It's not right what y'all do! Hey, bro. Chaos. Chaos, guys. The growing number of rioters in the streets began attacking civilians, throwing debris at cars, pulling people from their vehicles, smashing shop windows. Dude, it's not GTA. Don't be doing that. What the heck, guys? They're acting it up a little too too much, guys. Windows and setting them on fire. Nah, man. Okay, now I know why this went down in history, bro. Trying to be freaking... Trying to start chaos, like, literally. The chaos... I don't think... I don't think a lot... LA has been hit this hard since. ...sent shockwaves into the living rooms of millions of Americans across the nation. As a Chinese immigrant by the name of Choi Si Choi and a trucker named Reginald Denny, who was delivering gravel for the construction of low-income housing, were both horrifically attacked during live coverage of the riots. At approximately 7.15 p.m., as reports of vandalism, looting, and physical attacks continued to come in, Lieutenant Mullen elected to take the information, but not respond. Mullen was later relieved by a captain, ordering officers only to assess the Florence and Normandy area. And I don't think they have enough manpower here now, now guys, right? They would, uh... I'm not sure the National Guard was helping them during this point, but they should be. At 12.15 a.m., Mayor Bradley signed an order for a dusk-to-dawn curfew, as well as declaring a state of emergency for the city of Los Angeles. I'd be pretty scared, man. They seem to be attacking only businesses for the most part, but just like random passers by. Come on now. That's even worse, you know what I mean? And on the following day, by mid morning, violence appeared widespread as extensive looting and arson was witnessed across Los Angeles County. The rioting moved from South Central Los Angeles going north. 
They're destroying this beautiful city, bro. Or through central Los Angeles. Millions of dollars lost. Decimating the neighborhoods as far as Westlake to Fairfax before reaching Hollywood. You gotta use a fire stand. Like Looting and fires engulfed Hollywood Boulevard and simultaneously rioting moved west into neighboring independent cities of Compton, Carson, and Long Beach. You might even remember Long Beach native Bradley Noel singing about it on Sublime's self-titled album. R.I.P. Bradley Noel, fucking legend. From Olympic. Dang, bro. Street. Did he? Did he? <clears throat> did he participate in as well? And it's multiple cities. What the heck? To 120th Street laid the forefront of many small family-owned local businesses, primarily owned by first-generation Korean immigrants, many of whom escaped from North Korea into South Korea before immigrating to the United States. Many. Dang, the Korea problem is still going on even then, guys? Many of whom were formerly voluntold soldiers who knew how to fight. And the fight came to Koreatown rather There, guys, there's like a crack on my front tooth. It's not a chip, but I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's bothering me, guys. Swiftly, as rioters moved up north from Florence and Normandy with a newfound thirst for looting. At 11.30 a.m., one employee of a local gun store, David Ju, was working behind the counter when the shop phone rang. It was a phone call from his employer, Richard Park, who owned another store a few doors down. Richard informed David that he was at the nearby shop. Guys, do you think a debt, uh, <clears throat> I'm using like the, the, the whole, you know, <clears throat> guns to defend themselves is justified here? Let me know in the comments below. And in the middle of a gunfight. David locked up the gun store, ran across the parking lot, armed with a Beretta. When he arrived, he heard gunshots, at which point looters from across the street made their way to the gun shop plaza and opened fire on Richard and David. But when the two men fired back, the assailants fled the area immediately. Word quickly spread throughout Koreatown that this method had worked. Dang, he's ready to, he's ready to defend, bro. He's, not, he's got so much, you know, goods in there not only protecting richard's property but his life korean business owners who caught word of this began to phone in a los angeles based radio station called radio korea pleading to the radio station's audience for an armed response to help protect their property everybody parked in a street and they took some everything liquor you know beer when you got here you said people were still inside the store what did you do Three inside I shut the, you know, eight times, everybody moved. A merchant guarding his property. You got anybody out there or just the shot? Rick Romero out here. All of the merchants here are not going to wait for the National Guard or police or anything. Dang, bro. Literally taking matters, like, looks like nobody's trying to, you know, confront them now, right, guys? Anybody else? You talked about guerrilla warfare, and it's right here, right on the premises here. Just about every one of the individuals in this. Radio Korea quickly became dubbed Koreatown's makeshift command center, warning listeners of the whereabouts of incoming looters, and offered itself as a 911 system, allowing shop owners to call out for help over the air. After the realization sank in, there would be no response from police, fire, or EMS already stretched too thin, responding to thousands of ongoing emergencies. Thousands of emergencies, guys, what the heck? We need uh, additional guard in here. We have no police support whatsoever. People are driving by shooting at us, and we have to do something about it. A local resident by the name of Ina Cho and president of the Korean Veterans Association in 1992 was listening to the broadcast. Dang, bro and decided to call in a little broadcast of his own, requesting all Korean Marine Corps veterans to respond to the area. Soon after, a group of around 15 Korean Marine Corps veterans arrived, equipped with rifles and rendezvoused with Cho. The men responded to a large electronics warehouse, Kim's TV, where Radio Korea was broadcasting that a mob of looters were attempting to break in. The warehouse had an iron door, which the mob was beating and ramming with a truck. When the mob finally took down the door, Cho attempted to stop the looters who were sprinting inside when two vehicles with a combined occupation of 10 people got out of their cars and opened fire on Cho, hitting him one time. Richard Kim, whose parents owned the electronics. Dang, bro. All for goods, man? You know, I'm glad, I'm glad that uh, something like this just doesn't happen no more. Like, come on now. It, it's taking it too far. They're trying to actually, like, hurt him back as well. Store armed himself with a semi-automatic rifle. 
As the warehouse was under fire, his mother suffered a gunshot wound while trying to shield his father. And as more Koreans became injured, more and more Koreans took up arms, taking positions on rooftops for maximum tactical advantage. Not only did they have the high ground and could see everything from the roof, but parapets made for the perfect cover from incoming fire. And these firefights were televised. More uh, familiar with weaponry than I am, he says it looks to be a nine millimeter Uzi. Uzi. Where Korean shopkeepers could be seen armed with M1 carbines, Ruger Mini 14s, pump action shotguns, handguns, and Daewoo K1A1s. Like, look at this dude's loadout. He's got a red polo t shirt and a Daewoo K1A1. I don't even know what that is, guys. <laughs> then. They were, they were all prepared, bro. They all had the the necessary means to, I mean, you know. One of the most iconic photographs of roof greens happened at a small grocery store called California Market. The owner fortified his store with 20 well-armed employees and volunteers, all of whom were wearing white headbands. They were often shooting blanks or discharging warning shots into the air, which is dumb. Gotta, gotta wonder where those went, you know? But their methods worked. I know, right? When, it, it, it's gonna fall down. That's scary, man. As looters scattered, I'm glad he pointed that out. Battered, fleeing the area as quickly as they could. On May 3rd, after four days of exchanging gunfire with armed looters, the rooftop Koreans successfully forced every single wave of remaining mobs out of Koreatown, saving countless lives and livelihoods in which the Korean American identity was born. Hey, bro. Well done. Well done, though, guys. And on that same day, over 1,100 Marines and 6,500 National Guard troops patrolled the streets of Los Angeles, putting an end to the chaos. Yay! If it wasn't for a few brave men who stood up against their opposers, Koreatown would have been unsalvageable. The nearly week-long rioting killed more than 60 people, injuring more than 2,300, and caused approximately $1 billion in damage. Dang, bro, Los Angeles, man. I, I bet there's still, like, bad effects from when it happened today that, you know, Los Angeles would be a little bit better without it, something like this happening, guys. Half of which was sustained by Korean-owned businesses. Korean Americans have come to refer to the 1992 uprising as Saigu, which translates to April 29th, a day Koreans will never forget. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this, it's pretty sad as well, man. It straight up targeted them. Video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. There's a lot more of these videos in the works, and you don't want to miss them. So make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. All right, guys, that's a video, guys. It's literally what a militia is meant to be. Process those Americans, immigrants, or not. This is without a doubt the best case for gun ownership you can make. Applaud the Korean community for ban banning, banning together and protecting their businesses. Thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Check out the original video in the description below. And I'll see you guys next one. Peace out, everyone. Uh, I do all my reactions live on Twitch. So if you want to come through, say hi. You're more than welcome. Later, guys.